telescope. All these years later, Tyson's passion for the universe and his charisma in conveying it have made him into the rare science celebrity. He's got best-selling books, millions of followers on social media, and his own late-night show called Star Talk, where celebrities line up to talk to him about the galaxy. People Magazine even once named him the sexiest astrophysicist alive. I visited Dr. Tyson for a Sunday sit-down at the Hayden Planetarium here in New York. Welcome to the inner sanctum. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson's office. Man, you got a lot of stuff. Just might be the most fascinating exhibit at the Museum of Natural History. I've had astronauts in here who have flown on that shuttle, so they signed this. Is that right? A collection of space oddities going back as far as a seventh grade woodshop project. So I made a lamp out of Saturn. And so it's right here. And you, and you press the rings wow, and, this, and it wow. turns on. From his office, Tyson can see the Hayden Planetarium, where at nine years old, he first became captivated by the stars. I thought it was a hoax, because I grew up in the Bronx. I've seen all 12 visible stars from the Bronx. That's why I knew this was a hoax. That's not the night sky. I know what the night sky looks like. But of course, it is the, the real sky, and it was uh, indelible. That little boy grew up to become the director of Hayden Planetarium, a position he's held since 1996. In the two decades since, the astrophysicist has become a science celebrity. This is Star Talk. He even has a late night show called Star Talk, where famous guests include everyone from Bill Clinton to oh, Katy Perry oh, to Whoopi Goldberg. If we could send folks to the moon, they got out of the capsule, yeah. they party. Yeah. Played golf, drove Played around. Played golf, drove around. <laughs> What, what did we see up there that prevented us from going back? Space travel is one of Tyson's favorite topics, but he's frustrated that NASA hasn't gone farther over the years and skeptical that it will. Do you believe the United States will go to Mars eventually, sometime soon? Are we going there for security reasons? If the answer is no, we're not going. Are we going there for economic reasons? Is there oil on Mars <laughs> without the war driver and upsettingly without the economic driver? Uh, no, no, I don't see us ever going to Mars. Tyson is outspoken, particularly on Twitter, where he dashes off his observations to more than 9 million followers on everything from the science of football. The field goal they kicked was deflected a third of an inch to the right because of the rotation of the Earth to the inaccuracy of sci-fi movies. You and gravity. I, I, I want to think I'm, I'm I, that's another interview. And climate change. The second week of August, I posted a tweet that became my most retweeted tweet ever. I said, that's odd. I don't see anyone in denial of next week's total solar eclipse. Yet, like climate change, it is predicted by the methods and tools of science. What do you say to people who say, Maybe climate change is man-made, but it's not as dire as people like you and Al Gore are making it sound. I, I would ask, uh, what are you basing that on? Because I'm basing my comments on a consensus of experiments and observations made by thousands of scientists in multiple fields and reviewed by the National Academy of Sciences. If you want to cherry pick it, you are revealing your own biases. Just be honest about that. But to say, I, I don't trust the science, I don't believe, the science is not in. No, you're lying to yourself and to people who might be turning to you for leadership. Tyson says scientists and engineers should be focusing on adapting to the realities of climate change and not just reacting to them. I'm tired of looking at photos of countless thousands of cars exiting a city because a hurricane is coming. Mm. Where are the engineers and scientists saying, you know, instead of running away from the city that's about to be destroyed by this hurricane, let me figure out a way to tap the cyclonic energy of this hurricane to drive the power needs of the city that is otherwise going to destroy. Where are those people? You need a culture where that becomes a natural state of how people think, rather than buy toilet paper, buy water, run. That's our current natural state. And I don't think that was the country I grew up in. I don't think so. Tyson believes his own celebrity is an encouraging sign, a byproduct of a new interest in science, 
from blockbuster movies like The Martian to his own book on astrophysics, which has been near the top of the bestseller list for five months. If a science book gets there, it means, wow, science is mainstreaming in an important way. People do care about science. Let's keep pumping it. And they want it as part of the daily conversation. And so, yeah, I think, there, well, I think there's hope for the world. <laughs> You heard Dr. Tyson's skepticism about the United States going to Mars. Well, just this week, tech mogul Elon Musk announced his rocket company, SpaceX, plans to land two cargo ships on Mars in the year 2022, just five years from now. Ships carrying crews would then arrive two years later. The new season of Star Talk premieres tonight on National Geographic Channel at 1110 Central. And to hear Neil deGrasse Tyson explain why he doesn't think it's his job to pressure politicians and presidents to come around on climate change, check out our web extras at today.com slash Sunday. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on 